Welcome. My bales. We're talking Mobile. about food and eating and how much food is necessary to eat when you're doing a lot of lifting because it is significantly more than you've probably ever wanted to. And then you get to the oh, yeah. point where you're eating so much chicken per day, you become chicken. I, Kat, I don't know you if anyone told chicken. you that. Well, you, you actually become part chicken. You're going to start developing like a beak and they don't, they don't tell you oh. that. Oh. Yeah. So. I mean, <laughs> I don't, this is, is this just a weird observation? Is oh, the no. yellow with the orange red top kind of chicken? -like? Kind of chickeny. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Cat's looking a little chickeny today. <laughs> you know, I didn't even notice it. And now that you brought it to my attention, I can't unsee it now, so. And so we, uh, we have a chicken on set today. Uh, and, uh, Dan. So you'll note we have chicken plus Dan today. Um, Drew is out due to the holiday thing. So we're going to be doing another one of those, like, kickback, throwback, uh, one-shot things where Helene meets another one of the current crew members. Uh, but with, with a little holiday spin, because... Why not? This was technically planned for a couple weeks ago. So I'm just going to do the same thing that we're going to do, but now condense it down into one episode instead of the two that I was going to do. Anyways, it's going to be good. It's going to be probably fun. God, I hope. I hope it's fun. Anyways, welcome to Spelljammer. This is going to be Spelljammer-esque, mostly just because it's the cast of the Spelljammer show. Otherwise, it's just going to be some holiday shenanigans, and I hope you're down for that. There are some ways. The trick, that, yeah, go ahead. I was just saying the trick for us is to not die so that we don't have to do magical wavy hands. Stuff. Yeah, so no no magical hand waving is kind of the goal of this. So survive. <laughs> that so what is you're saying goal, is we Kat. have we have super special plot armor. <laughs> no, I don't think, no, no, I don't think that's what he's saying. That's no, the problem. <laughs> I have been devising the most a horrific holiday interactions to kill Dan's character, all right? This is so, no. We've talked about this. If I give Pine Sol some kind of plot armor, there will be no limit to the ends of ridiculousness that you will throw yeah, you, at me. So I physically cannot do Kat, that though. for you. I cannot okay, do that. Okay, you know, I tried, I tried, Chad, I tried. <laughs> Maybe someday down the line, but today is not that day. <laughs> As an additional note, my audio has been fucking weird all day today. So those of you at home, if you notice like my my mic gets really quiet or something like that, just mention it in the chat and I'll adjust it. Something is messing with my gain control and is aggressively changing it every once in a while. So thank you. I appreciate the help. Um, you can also interact with this game if you would like to. Uh, you can donate to this lovely cast here, and all proceeds do go directly to them. $5 for a reroll, $10 for a nat 20, $15 for a character internal monologue called Insight, and $20 for the best thing, a draw from the deck of many, which has resulted in some very fun things in the past so far. Second, because I totally forgot to do this, and I'm going to hit that button right now. There's like a tweet that goes along with this show that I continually forget to hit the button on but it's there now. So if you retweet that tweet 10 times, they'll get a free nat 20 because that's just fun for them. Or I'll get it because that's fun for me. Uh, no, 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 no. That's not fun. <laughs> I don't like that. But We're that's... supposed to survive. Well, mostly survive. So anyways, this is going to be Spelljammer-esque, and we're going to go on a holiday escapades thing. And, um, well, I guess I don't need to ask for anyone's recap because it doesn't matter. And we just jump in. Do you guys want to play uh, Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, at least Dan's interested. Yeah. I'll take I want to play. Dra can I? Play All right. Hold today? on. I'm I'm doing a thing called a uh, filling out a uh, insurance. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is this in-game insurance? Cat, cat. No. You cannot do this. No, you cannot. That's not how this works. <laughs> Totally not cat. Nope. Thank you for the 10 <laughs> for character plot insurance. You know what? It's the holidays. Both of you get a nat 20. I don't care. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We'll yeah. stack it in there. Merry yeah. freaking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. 
I'm just getting guilted into giving you guys things. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I, you know, hey, I'm paying for my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> this is my insurance premium. <laughs> it's the we insurance live in America. Plan. We have to pay for things like this. Yeah, we have to pay for things like this. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll, additionally, and thank you very much, Guild, for uh, tacking onto that with three more nat 20s and two pulls from the deck of many. So that's something we'll have to handle. Congratulations. Ooh. Now, keep that in mind. It is going to be on the little boon card there in, the, uh, in your... Uh, journals and we'll check them off when we have time and i'm gonna go ahead and shuffle up the deck of many and draw a couple cards and we'll see how this plays out in the game hooray merry crimbus everyone well, merry crimbus <laughs> excellent merry chrysler and fiat navida fiat navida <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Happy Honda days. <laughs> Happy Honda I, I ha days. I had. I'm. I've. I'm a Mexican man, and I've grown up Mexican, speaking lots of Spanish. I have yet to hear Fiat Navidad. That's the first time I've heard that. I'm. I'm this many years old. That's oh, funny. That is fantastic. Okay. Well. Or uh, yeah. You got, let's let's do it. This is good enough. Fiat Navidad, everyone. <laughs> we're going back to the damn rock, okay? Yeah. Oh, this, we're this at is, the rock. Yeah, Here we go. we're at the rock. We're at the rock. And for my players, because you did take damage the last time we were playing, go ahead and, like, you had a long rest, because this is years ago. Just make a note of what that HP was at at some point in time. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. Let's just play. Ooh, I'm hurting. Game. You're hurting. I know. It was rough. I'm hurting. It was rough. So, we're going to find ourselves in a uh, a bar known as the White Galleon. Basically, the dead center of uh, the middle portion of the rock, known as the Middle City. Where we're going to find our friend, Helene. Kind of just hanging out and waiting. We were asked to be here by, well friend you met previously, Vincent Hammond, representative of some unknown benefactor. Vincent has been uh, crucial in providing you various different acquisition jobs that you can, well, feed yourself and uh, mm -hmm. continue to exist. It's great. As you sit- Lady's got to eat. Yeah. As you sit in the White Galley, it's a rather understated affair, much less fancy than the Man of War from previous. Vincent will enter. Vincent Hammond is a uh, human male, mid-40s, wears this silk-embroidered vest, long golden chain of a pocket watch dangling from the side, slick back black hair, and a perfectly kept goatee. He looks about disdainfully in the galleon, sniffs, and walks over to you. He looks down at the chair and rubs his hand on it, examines his fingers, makes a face, I truly hate that we have to come here now after the incident at the Manor War. Helene? What's that? What, oh. what do you mean? What, did I do something? You don't remember the do-daring escape that you and the Autonome had some months back? You know, I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. I didn't... Do, I don't dwell on the past, you know? Do you? Why are you dwelling? Dwelling. I'm. He pulls a napkin from the table and places it in the chair before he sits down. <sighs> we have another job for you. Mm, see, okay, we're not dwelling. I like this. Special circumstances exist for this one. Mm. As it is, this is a top secret acquisition, as are most of your jobs here. Our benefactor here has uh, made it quite. The top importance that no one knows where you are heading. You will be traveling once again on the Moon Dancer. This time, no crew at all, except for one, who should be arriving relatively shortly. He looks at his pocket watch here. And entering the White Galleon is one Pine Saul. Pine? This is some years ago. What does Pine look like? in the past. Well, you see, Pine, 
Pine actually has really, really bright, obnoxious green eyes. Like, looks like a glow stick. And they're extremely distracting. It, it's like, you know, like, almost like a, like a traffic light, you know? Yeah. So anyways, also, Pine ain't purple. I know, it's pretty crazy. Pine's actually bright yellow. Looks like a banana. So it kind of looks like somebody shoved a glow stick in a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Uh-huh. <laughs> Pine! You see Vincent Hammett, who contacted you previously about some kind of special job for you. You see him sitting across from an elegant astral elf, who, again, this being the past, Dan, go ahead and describe Helene for us as Pine's green eyes bore into you. <clears throat> um, Helene would be wearing something very similar to last time, which was a kind of raggedy. It's it's not it's not pristine. It's not, but it's not like. It's not, you didn't get it at Kmart, right? We didn't go to Kmart. We're not like, we're not that down bad. I try to, Helene tries to to keep a presence about her, but she also is kind of broke and she, you know, sometimes just don't always work. So it's more like, you know, the special stuff you might get at Target. Um, balling on a know, budget. A, yeah. Balling on a budget. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. We ain't shopping at the mall. Let's put it that way. Um, <clears throat> so she's wearing something very, uh, very fitting, very perfectly fitting. Um, there's a, there may be a couple of bullet holes or burn marks that, you know, can't afford to just replace something every time something gets damaged. Um, but she's tall, she stands very elegantly. Um, she's still kind of in her, I don't really wanna, I don't give anybody, you know, uh, I don't hide my attitude, let's put it that way. And I, 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 I wear everything on my sleeve and, uh, looks at probably looks as as a pine cell walks in kind of weirdly kind of like what the heck is what the, what the heck is this ah pine pleasure for you to join us please come have a seat just getting to the discussion of what the job will be and your role in it he gestures to the seat across yeah all right thanks for the seat mm. yep helene this is pine soul they will be instrumental in you locating the next, you know, package. Pine, the reason that we require your special gifts is the following. The job is on a remote asteroid some distance away. The issue is, is it moves. Not only does it move, but the star that it seems to be in the galaxy of moves as well. We need your keen eye to be able to find the light, a very specific wavelength only able to be seen by your people. And well, since you are so willing to come on this job and make a little cash, you will be the one navigating to the destination. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm here for the light, yep, I got them good eyes, you know. My eyes are very, very good, they, they're really good finding the light stuff, you know, like, like the really nice shiny stuff. Do yeah. we, do we foresee any having to hide or be stealthy? Because I don't, I don't think this is going to be very subtle. No, just get off the rock without being noticed, really. Once you're out in the Astral Sea, it won't matter overly much. On arriving at the asteroid, there is really only one location for you to end at. There is a workshop uh, in perpetual winter on it. Uh, Pine, Pine Sol, is that your name? Pine? Pine Sol, can I, I'm gonna call you Pine, is that okay? Yeah. Did you have to think about it? What's uh, 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 sorry. Anyway, what happens when you close your eyes? Uh, I see my eyelids. Can I, okay. So, if you close your eyelids, does it still emanate light? 
Yeah. <laughs> Damn. All right. Well, I guess that doesn't work now, does it? Do you just, do, do you just, okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. Are you making fun of my eyes? I'm not making fun. I'm trying to figure things out. We're going to be going on a mission. I, I don't know what you, what you're capable of. Do, why do you glow? I need to know. Why do you glow? Why do I glow? Why do you look like a tiny little piece of beef jerky with nipples on it? Uh, that I can't, I can't answer. I don't know. I, I was just born this way. And I'm sure that that's your answer too. I'm just wondering, does that become a yeah, problem exactly. when it gets Ex dark? Yeah, exactly, Purple Slim Jim. You know, you, you ain't so cool yourself. Enough, <sighs> enough, enough. You may get to know one another after I am done with the explanation of the job. What, what are we picking up? Are you going to tell us that or would you have to figure it out? I was getting to that until you started evaluating each other rather loudly at the bar. Uh, I got money to make. I don't know what's going on. Just tell me You'll be thing. traveling to a workshop only accessible through this specific star that Pine Saw will be locating for you and the moon dancer. Do you understand that much as well? What, am I stupid? Yeah. Sometimes I do believe so. There is an asteroid of perpetual winter run by an entity named Klaus. You'll be traveling to that location to retrieve a package of utmost importance to our benefactor. Make sense so far? Klaus is expecting the someone there far, yeah. to pick up this package. Acquire it, do not open it, and return with it quickly. The more expedient, I, the higher your pay. I got a, I got a question. Yes, Pine. Is the package glowing? The package may or may not be glowing. I have not been informed of that. It should be rather neatly wrapped, however. Okay, but... Oh. Okay. Um, I gotta... I gotta know... If it's... If it gives off light or it's glowing. Why? Why? Why do you need this? Listen, I got a condition, okay? been passed down through my great sister's mother's aunt, you know, six, you know, hatchlings ago, okay? And, you know, it's just, we're very, um, <clears throat> very sensitive, uh, to the light, things that are, you know, glowy. Pine Soul, uh, I expect that the package itself will not be glowing. Oh, okay, then we're good, we're good, yeah. Fantastic. If it is glowing, however, what would happen? Uh... I have to open it. Well, let's <laughs> hope it's not glowing, then. Any questions about your travel? Should just be quick <laughs> enough. Get there, arrive, take how, the package, How big leave. is this package? Is it like... Can I can I hold it? Can I? It should be a box it? that you can hold. Yes. Can I, is it fragile? I would consider it highly fragile. Okay. Uh, are you coming with me? I absolutely am not. You'll be meeting yeah, Captain Sartell push. on the Moon Dancer for your travels. She has been fully oh. briefed on this and who will be navigating. Interesting. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. Well, Curiously say, enough, know. after the whole incident on the Illithid ship, she is still willing to work with you. Yeah, yeah, she is. Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds, sounds good. Yep. Um, better, better be on our way then, I guess. Fantastic. He will stand and, like, looks down at the oil-soaked napkin he had sat there. Oh. Return here with the package, and I will pick it up from you. We will be watching the docks for the Moon Dancer's arrival. Do not worry about contacting me. Good day to you, what? and good luck. <laughs> and right. you will exit. All right. Pine soul. Pine. Pine. Pine soul. I've heard that. I've heard that word before. What is that? Where are you from? Um, 
Hmm. Looks around. Any... Hey, barkeep, you got any roaches or something that can translate for me? Where are you from? Ah, oh, hey, no roaches here. He looks down and smashes one that's on the bar. Oh, does that, wait, is that bad? Are you okay? No, they're gross. Ah, uh, okay, right. where are you gonna eat that? Eat, eat, eat what? The paper? Yeah. No? Cool. Can I have it? Wait, what was on the paper? There was no paper? What, these, what, wasn't, there a, wasn't there an oil-soaked paper? Oh, it's the <laughs> napkin that he set down on the no, chair the for him to sit. Yes, there was that. Oh. N no? Are you? You might, you might have, you know, can I pass it over here? Uh, is this gonna be a, is this gonna be a problem? What? Yeah, I don't what? care, no, I it's think. Like a, it's a whole thing, thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? Is that, was that from the guy? What do you, oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, I'm hungry, all right? Hold I gotta on. eat before a big was, job, okay, you know? God, it was, it was so much easier with a robot. Um, robots aren't gross. Okay, all right, fine. What, do you eat normal stuff? Like, Why don't you think I'm gross? What the heck is that thing on your face? What thing on my face? What do you mean? You know, your little thing on the center of your face. That thing's disgusting, that fleshy little thing you guys got. My nose? Yeah, you guys got stuff coming out of it and it's gross. That's gross. I mean, I, I agree. I agree it's gross. I don't I don't like stuff in there, but it, do you not... Wait, do you... Do you smell things? Do you want to smell this? No. And yes, I do smell. Just not... I don't got one of those gross little fleshy knobs on your face. You know, I'm not going to argue with you. This the, the noses are pretty gross. I don't want a nose. Um, there was a book I read and it, the, the bad guy didn't have a nose and I found them quite attractive. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's going after this little kid. I don't know why. The little kid had special powers and a stick that he waved around. I, I just, I don't know. I just, the guy didn't have a nose. I thought he was cool. Uh, whatever. Sounds like a nuisance. A nuisance? All right, fine. Whatever. Fine, I mean, we don't have the same chasing taste. Chasing a, little, chasing a little kid around. I mean, like, you know, not having a nose is very great, you know. I feel like it could be, you know, some, you know, something that could get up it or something, you know? Oh, stuff gets up it all, all, all the time. All the time. Oh, I didn't want to know that. That's gross. Anyways. You just ate, you just ate a, a napkin that that's, was, has excrete on it. Excrement. I don't know what the heck you just ate. It's oil. Yeah? From where? Do you know where do you know where the oil came from? Is it just sanitary? Are you sanitary? I'm completely sanitary, thank you. Uh, yeah, alright. Covers covers up the holes. It's fine. Uh -huh. Alright, all right. All right. Can you talk to me? Tell me, tell me a thing. Okay. Yeah, what? So you're supposed to be doing this navigation stuff and whatnot. What, what, what else do you do? Can I ask? Can I ask what else you're good at? Um, well, uh, I am part of a clutch that, uh, is very, very good at, uh, setting things on fire and hitting stuff. Usually paid muscle most of the time, but um, you know, I kind of want a different life. I think. What is what does that mean? You want a different life? I found the light. You know. I think it's my true calling. Is to find light, and follow is it. That... Yeah. I guess you could say I'm becoming a. What do you call it? Culturalistic, ritualistic, no. I'm finding a religion. Is that what you guys call it? Uh, is there is there a candle on the table? Sure. 
I get, I'm gonna, can I light it? I'm gonna light it. Yeah. It's like middle, middle, day. Day on an asteroid is kind of weird, but yeah, you can light it. Sure. I light it and I hold, I just hold it up. You see, you, you see pine yeah, size, like they're normal and all of a sudden you go, you can't even see the <laughs> islands anymore. They're just so <laughs> green. <laughs> they're just bright green glowing orbs. You just see, you can't see any, there are no islands, nothing. It's just like pure, like the neon green, like light just staring <laughs> right at the candle. And I just, I just do one of these. Yes. <laughs> I just follows. And then I blow it out. Yeah. What? Anyways, like I was saying, yeah, I'm coming like with no, 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 uh, no, no. Uh, hey, religious people. What was what? that? What was that? What was what? You essentially became entranced with the light. What does this mean? I need what to. What are know. you even talking about? Because I don't need you distracted by shiny things and lights when we're on this mission here. Excuse me. What? I didn't do such thing. I don't know. What, I think you literally just asked me about, you know, what I do and stuff. And I literally was explaining it to you. Yeah. And then I lit a candle and you just became a different thing. When did you do that? You elves are really silly. <sighs> you and your fancy little words and mind tricks and stuff. I did that. I just, I just lit the candle. Okay, when when you see shiny light, what happens to you? Do you do you know? What's what's this light thing? Oh, it's a condition. Condition. Did a doctor tell you this? No. My shaman. Cool. Mm hmm. Yeah. Shaman. Shaman yeah. match. The door yeah. to the White Galleon mm -hmm. slams open, and Captain Elena Sartell stands in the doorway, arms outstretched in disbelief. You're supposed to be getting on my ship? What in the hell is this going on? Helene, Helene checks her nose for, uh, make sure she's not bleeding. Quit picking at your nose. Let's go. I heard uh, we've got you. Just, Is this Pine Soul? The other one coming aboard, eh? Uh, yes, I hello. Don't, I don't think it's Pleasure to meet, nice to meet you. Captain Elena Sartell of the Moon Dancer. Pleasure to meet you. Yes, you as well. Now, let's get on the ship, Helene. All right. I all right, whatever you say, Mama. You know we're getting I'm just you we're getting paid for how quickly we can get the job done. Oh, are I you two like are you two like married, you know? What? No. Yes. Are you guys like are you guys yes. mates? No. Yes. No Oh guys oh yeah. Is it true that some of you like mate for life, you know? Yes. No. Oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, congratulations. I'm really happy for you. Hopefully this job, you know, really helps you two out, you know. Thank you. It's tough. Thank you. It's tough out there. I, yeah. I, I, we we appreciate it. Yeah, I'll meet you all on the ship. You know. Okay. No, yep. we're all going together now. And we're right, not married. Right, Helene, go. stop lying. God. Let's go. She will lead right. you out of the white galleon, essentially dragging you if you resist in any way. It's gonna get this job done. Fix up my ship for all of the damages that you. And your friends cause, Helene. I mean, okay. I I mean, okay. So okay, you gotta. This pine saw creature has got like a thing with lights, and it gets very distracted. And I just want, I just wanted to make sure that we were good. You know, we are good. We need that distraction of the light to even find the damn place we're going to. I understand. I'm sorry. Could punish me later. Shut up. Let's go. Man, you, you right. say you're not married, but you know, like you guys are pretty. Uh, we had you know, one job, to, two jobs together, and whatever. This is not the time to have this conversation, anyways. Get oh, on the is ship. Oh, that like? Is, oh, I get it. So, like, you've already been to what is it? I, I talked to a couple of dwarves uh, about. 
Uh, so you've already been to second base, so now you just need to get to third. No. I'm not sure what these bases have to do with anything, but... We have a base here, and then we should hopefully have a base we're arriving at. And then you get to the third base. Oh. Which is, yeah. Where is that? I don't know. You guys, like, bond for life or something. I don't know what the heck no, you guys do after that. absolutely not. And you'll learn just as well as I have that, um, well, Helene's not one to bond for life. If it gets me where I need to go. Shut up. Get on the ship. You come out to the All main right. dancer where our friend Flapjack the Flump is waiting. Oh, hi. Welcome aboard. I don't know you. Hi, my Hello. name is Flapjack. I will be your spell jammer for today. Oh, yes. Hello, spell jammer. Yes. Oh, Pleased to meet you. Fantastic. You know how to pilot a ship? Yes, I do. I've piloted many. Oh, good. You can you give do. me a break when we get out yes. of the docks. Huh? Uh, probably not a good idea. Oh, right. You're supposed to be navigating. Fantastic. That'll do just fine. Now, please. Yeah, that's you. Yeah. Come, put your stuff down in the uh, the hold below, and we'll get moving. Okay. All right. Captain Elena, with like a pulsating uh, vein on her forehead at this point in frustration, goes, Yes, please, Flapjack, get us the hells out of here. And as you all board, it doesn't take much of a crew to pilot any of these things. Flapjack, with his telepathic abilities and connection to the ship, will lower the sails. And the Moon Dancer begins to pull away from the Rock of Brawl. Leaving you to put your stuff down in the hold below and your new rooms for the time being. And reconvene on the deck of the ship. As you pull out and away from the Rock... Captain Elena will come to Pine and say, All right, so you're supposed to be the master navigator here. Something about a star in the sky. He didn't even give me a star chart. I have no idea where we're going. So, Pine, it's on you. Where are we that, going? That's, that's why I'm here. All right. Yep, yeah, going that way. Going that way. Pine, do you just point in a random direction or do you want to actually find the star? <laughs> Do we go that way? You point <laughs> off into the distance and he looks at you and goes, oh, All right. Yeah. Uh, Flapjack, follow the finger, I suppose. And um, we'll be on our way. I don't, I don't know much about ships, but I don't think that's how this works. Are uh, you sure? I was told that we were supposed to listen to the bug. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do about this. I mean, I don't know. All right. Oh. Pine, how long do you let this go on? Only for a couple of minutes. We need to get away from. We need to get away from the rock, you know, because of all the lights. Okay. <laughs> so a few minutes pass, and you're away from the rock. What do you want to do? Now I'm actually going to attempt to look for the star. All right. Roll me. With advantage, a survival check. That is a natural 20 that you didn't even have to, to pull from your, your pocket. That is incredible. And so, Pine, hey. you go through like the various different lights uh, that you can see, right? The different wavelengths, and you eventually do find one. It's a mixture of red and green wavelength that only one star is emitting in the astral sea. And you see it, and honestly, it was pretty vaguely in the direction that you had originally pointed. You only need to make a general adjustment here, and you're actually heading directly for it. What you do note, though, as you watch the star, is that it is moving. And when you flip through all of these different wavelengths of light in the nat, like the natural, what normal, you know, like regular elf folk might see, they cannot even see the light source at all. So you are absolutely necessary to find this damn thing as it moves through the astral sea. <laughs> in trying to find the different wavelengths, you just hear this, you, 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 just see Pine staring out 
at the vastness of space, and you just hear this. Because every single time they're closing their eyes, they make like a weird like tick tick, like like a bug like a bug kind of chirping, but it's only tick 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 as they're like funneling through the different wavelengths to find the right one. It's perfect. I love it. <laughs> what's what's it doing? I think I think they're taking some kind of mental note. I'm I'm not sure. Or maybe it's the sound of the the eyelids clicking together. Oh, do you think this? Do you think bugs get off on like stars and stuff? Or Why does it always come back to getting off with you? Every time. You know, I. When I'm around you, things just uh, no, uh, weird. Because no. That, that's hmm? because astro elves are naturally predisposed to have a, a really, really bad. Oh God, God, it, it stinks. Can you like walk over there? Who me? No, not you. Yeah, uh, yeah, the astro. Could you go away? Goodness, uh, the pheromones okay. that one's given off are way too strong, guys. It's like it's like putting your head in a dumpster. Ugh. Oh, oh. Goodness. Uh, interesting. Helene, you can literally uh, see, like, the musk dripping <laughs> off of you. There's <laughs> musk dripping off of you? It's like, I, I mean, you can't see it? No. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I don't know what it is, but, like, you know, they were not like that at the at the tavern, the bar, that's for sure. You know, I don't know what the heck is with it, but... <sighs> Uh, Ellie, do you, do you mind going to stand by Flapjack while Pine gets us the directions? We can't afford to have them distracted. <sighs> we can't afford to have them distracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to happen much. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go over here. Fine. Whatever. Thank you. I'll make it up to oh, you. God. Oh? And she'll turn back to, to Pine. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay. I found it though. We're gonna go that way. Oh, all oh, right. Yes. Um, she looks up into the sky and goes, "I don't see a damned thing." Um, it's okay. Uh, you know, it's okay. Actually, I'll switch spots with uh the the dripping pheromone elf over there. Okay, we just. Uh, her, her name's Helene. I'm gonna. If Helene. You, yes, close enough. I suppose. Hel yeah. All right, Helene. We're gonna switch spots. Okay. I'm not too stinky go. for you. No, you just got such a thing with this other person. It's just, it, it stinks. God. Okay. All right. So you could go stand next to him. I'm going to go stand next to the, uh, go stand next to Flapjack. Yeah. Go, okay. up, go up to Flapjack. And say, oh, why? Where are we going? Hi. Okay. We're we going walk to be by each other, but I, I do this. I put my hands in the air. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> What? Oh god, I think I got something in my head. Helene, eye. come ah. down here. That we cannot afford this. Oh my eye! Kinda burns a little bit. <laughs> what? Yeah. I just walk I'm walking. Helene what? Helene. As you, like as you arrive next to Captain Elena, she'll Helene. We do have a chamber that you can bathe in, if perhaps that might help. Wait, do you think I smell too? She sniffs at you. Honestly, I can't smell a damned thing on you, but, um, except, is that lavender? Uh, maybe. I'm, I can't read the package, so yeah, maybe. She smiles at you. We can't afford to have our navigator distracted. If you wouldn't mind, perhaps, just trying? I mean, sure. at least you, you could go right. get a room, you know, that's all I'm saying, but like... We have separate rooms. Separate rooms. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it might help with the stank. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Helene, please, just below decks then. Yeah, yep, all right. I'm so sorry. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one for Helene, all right. <laughs> 
Oh, who's sitting by or standing by Flapjack now, Pine? He's. Oh, I'm now. Right. I am now directing Flapjack yeah. correctly as it, like you know, he, with like, coordinates. Follows stuff. with like his little tentacle arm into the distance, and you talk about the coordinates of the location. And like, oh, okay, and yeah, and every once in a while you do have to like find it again and readjust because it is kind of traveling somewhat, you know, across the astral sea here. So. It is fortunately not getting any further away, but it does seem to just be traveling in a horizontal line here. A day does pass in this fashion, perhaps with Helene bathing or not. It doesn't necessarily matter, but eventually we do arrive. And what you see before you is, in fact, what looks to be a sunless sky, except for Pine being able to see there is actually a star in the system that emanates a different light than anything else that you've seen before. And one trailing asteroid that looks like somewhat like a comet would, covered in ice and things of that nature, but doesn't have the evaporative tail. And it seems that there's a blizzard happening on this asteroid. A small enough object that weather really shouldn't exist here anyways. The captain looks down and goes, well, I don't see any other asteroids covered in ice and in a blizzard. Suppose that's our destination. Well done, Pine. Not sure how close we can get to it, though. Flapjack, take us in, but slow. I don't want us getting trapped on the damn thing. The airship will kind of make its way down, Spelljammer, closer to the asteroid itself, and the wind begins picking up more. Flapjack yells out, Oh, hey, I think I'm having a little bit of trouble holding on to this thing here. And as he does so, he gets whipped up and captured in the storm. The moon dancer going careening down towards the asteroid itself. Upon where it lands rather unceremoniously, crashing through the snow up on all sides. The landing is a little rough and jarring, but fortunately... Other than the immediate feel of the cold around you, you're all safe. The moon dancer's a bit roughed up. I'm going to take some looking at to perhaps adjust some uh, rigging and maybe repairs. But as you look over the bow of the ship, sitting on the ground as it is now, you see a workshop. 20-foot-high stone walls surrounding what looks to be like a squat, castle-like building. But the building is warm-looking. Lights in every window. Warm candlelight emanating from it. And as the snow settles in the area, you see a small creature. Humanoid in nature, come trundling out of a small outbuilding on the edge of the wall. They're smaller than Pine, even. It's their hair whipping around in the snow. They, they give a wave out and go, Hey! Hey, are you all right? Hello? Anyone? Uh, do, you, do you see that out there? Yeah. What is it? Pine just gives Lane this really weird look like. You've got uh, the eyeballs. What is it? Yeah, fly. It? I don't got no binoculars built into these things. Hey, what the heck? No infrared. Sh 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 hey, don't, don't yell. Hey, hello? I can hear you out there. Are you okay? Come, come. You, you can get warm in here. We can figure it out. Who are you? Uh, hi, I'm Telfy. Tell what? What did, what did they say? They said Telfy. Do you... Alright, um... Do you got a weapon? Can you get your weapon ready? You see... <laughs> you see Pine pull out this, like... Looks like a tiny little... It's like... It looks like one of those, like, lawn lamps that you, like, stick in the ground. But... But they press a button and it just goes... <laughs> it just gets longer and then it's just this like it looks like a lamppost. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, 
Elena, you okay? Everything. What's did what happened? I'm all right. That's all right. Um, we got caught in some kind of vortex. It sucked us on down here. Um, I, perhaps we should go check it out then. Flapjack, yeah, just, uh, can you see to the ship? Be on guard. And Flapjack would come bobbing on. All oh, right. Yes. It make to some repairs and things. All right. Everybody, be on guard. Let's let's go. Spread out, straight line. We kind of hop off the side of the ship here and into the snow, and it is freezing cold. The little outbuilding that Telfi, this small creature, is standing outside of, does look warm and inviting. And you can hear what seems to be maybe mooing from inside the building itself. Telfi waves from his... Oh, come on, then! Come on! And as you make your way over there, you do eventually see Telfi. Looks like an elf, but much, much smaller. I'm going to drag us to this for everyone, uh, just to show us Telfi here. Telfi is an elf leg. Very small, long hair pulled back in here, and is in a stable. Currently waiting for you to arrive at the door. She waits, kind of hanging on the large barn door here. Come on in, come, come. And Elena looks at both of you. I mean, I don't know if we've got much of a choice here. I mean, I got a choice. I can just die out here. It's fine. That's better than whatever might be in there. It's not a damn choice. And if you're dead, I can't make it up to you, can I? All right. Let's go. Entering into... The stable. The stalls are filled with four cows, each of them with names kind of pasted onto uh, placards on the front of their uh, holdings. Plotter, Fodder, Daughter, and Vixen. Telfi will kind of hurriedly uh, slam the door shut as quickly as her little elf hands can, and she will look to you all in the warmth of the stable here. She goes, oh, that was quite a fold you all had there, huh? Are you all right? Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever. Fine. Was, you guys okay? Yeah, so I'm, Who I'm, are you and what is I this place? Oh, I'm Telfi. Um, you've arrived at, well, Klaus's workshop. Who? Klaus? Klaus? Hi. Cows? No, these are cows. No, no Klaus's those are cows. workshop. What do you make here? Clowns? No, no, not clowns. Klaus. Clouds? No, not clouds. Ah, I got you that time. <laughs> I heard you the first time. Oh. <laughs> <That's> so, <laughs> Actually, no, I really heard so you the first time. But that's beside the point. Oh. Um, well, he makes, well, gifts for all the, uh, the good folk of, of the Astral Sea. And delivers them. I've been out here a long time. There's no good folk. What are you talking about? Well, there's quite a few. There's few good folk. And I, Elena will look over at you, Helene, and goes, I get a present every year. What? I? Wait, what, what, what kind of present? Oh, this, that, and the other. Most of the time it's a, you know, some nice cookies or uh, a, bis, a, a, a piece of the ship that I might need. Um, things or like a that. salt lamp. Oh, you got a salt lamp What's one that? year? Wait, yeah, you I get gifts too? Lamp, yeah, everybody who's good gets one. That's like the rule. Well, I'm good, and all that shows up is like these rocks. What? Um, uh, what, what's your name? Uh, Helene. Her eyes widen a little bit. She's... Oh, ah, uh, yes, of course you're on the good list. <laughs> And so where's where's my where's where's my stuff? Uh, um, we could get to that in a, in a little bit. Uh, we're actually in a bit of a a trouble here. You're here for. She looks over at Captain Elena. The, a package, correct? Elena nods. Well, um. How, how'd you know that? What? Some things have gone missing recently. The vault was broken into. Great. I gotta go change my password. The vault is, is biometrically coded. 
uh, to only have a few people be able to access it. Klaus, his his wife, and well, um, Woodolf. Who? Woodolf? Woodolf. Yeah, Woodolf. Yep. Wait, you? Wait, why does everybody know about this stuff? What are you talking about? Where are we? What What do you mean? Where are we? You're at Klaus's workshop. I don't. I've never heard of this place. The benefactor of Gift Miss. Gift Miss. Yes. Yeah. I. Nope. Nothing. Nothing it's rings a bell. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Gift giver in all the astral plane. I would disagree. I don't get anything. I get rocks. I, I, that's the only thing that's ever showed up near me when I didn't go get it myself. I I've gotten really everything myself. Want to say this, but the only people that get rocks are the ones that are on the naughty list. What? Me? On the naughty list? What did I do? I was just uh, living life. Well, perhaps you can go meet with um, the missus. Uh, and she takes care of the list and checks it twice. And maybe you can find out uh, why you've been naughty or nice. We need to check it a third or maybe fourth time. I, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to this Mrs. Whatever. Right, but, but, but can, you, can, can you maybe please help? We don't have your package. The vault's been, <sighs> been broken into and everything inside was taken, including what we were told was a very important package. Does and this Mrs. Uh, Klaus, does she walk and talk? And she does. All right, well, the, then, yeah, show us the way. Um, oh, all right. So, Telfy will lead you out into the snow. Going outside of the, the stables here, and kind of moving everyone a little bit over, you come out into what seems to be a bit of a workshop yard, where there is a man a deer man standing in the snow looking out over the tools in front of him here what the hell what are you what is going on here oh hi Rudolph. um we have some visitors that can hopefully help us out and he looks back and <laughs> takes a big sniff and eh, i'm sorry i'm feeling a little bit stuffy um but I'm glad you're here to help. Is that your Mm-hmm. Uh. Oh, I got something for you. Hold on. Ooh. Waddle on over there. Here. Reach into my... Moist sack. And I take out a little bit of my... Goop. Smell this. Uh-huh. Uh... Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure that that's very helpful. Uh, Helene's just got the the. I usually clears my sinuses. The hilt of her knife and is just hitting herself in the forehead, trying to wake up. Um, well, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, thank you for coming to maybe help a little bit. And as you look at him here, the weapons behind him begin to move. They begin to float into the air and very quickly launch themselves at Uwudolf and the group. What the I'm going heck? to need everyone to roll me some initiative. Everybody get down! Yeah, you yell that out. Ooh, Rudolph ducks down. And uh, there are a bunch of tools making attacks against you all. Great. Oh, great. Wonderful. It's just the Rudolph, <laughs> the red nosed reindeer. <laughs> what is this battle music? You like this? <laughs> <laughs> We're about this, to dance battle these, dude, this these slaps. weapons. I, I heard this song and I was like, oh, we're using this. We're going to dance battle these weapons. Just pop lock it. Just got to get funky. Uh-huh. Uh, Let's see. Telfy 
a swarm of tools. It's okay. My uh, my roll twenty is being super laggy, so I'm gonna roll all this, and then immediately have to refresh, because unfortunately, it's lagging everything on my computer, which we love that. Um, mm -hmm. Mine is also. Yeah. Every yeah, once in a while. Right Every <laughs> once like, in a okay. while. Yeah. So cut the music. And then we cut the YouTube VOD right there. And then eventually come back. But yeah, it's being real laggy today. I'm not sure what the deal is. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. I think Cat may have actually full frozen, at least on my screen. Oh, uh, oh, we're oh, back. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what's happening anymore. Huh. Is it okay? I think so. I think so. I think so. Is it okay? I think we're, I can hear you and that's what matters. Uh, Helene, what is your uh, dexterity bonus? Uh, Are you faster three? than a bunch of tools is the real question here. <laughs> Uh, I'm plus three. Ooh, you are just faster than them. Okay, cool. So you will be going first here as the tools uh, launch themselves out at poor Uwudolf. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so wait, it's just it, it's just one thing? It is a swarm of tools, yes. It's a swarm, okay. It's a, it's a tool NATO. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh... Uh, I, jeez, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna. <laughs> I, this might be a bad idea, actually. And as I think about it, but you know, just out of pure reaction, uh, I, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna throw one of my daggers at the at the swarm. Sure, yeah. Throw a dagger. Jeez. So is that just normal, just attack roll? Yeah. To throw it? Yeah, you're just All gonna right. well, so you're just gonna roll it. It's just ranged attack. You're gonna roll a little dealy. All right. Ooh. That, 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 my friend, is a natural one. Uh, I don't <laughs> think that's gonna hit as it clangs off into the uh, the swarm there. Yikes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, movement and bonus action. Yeah, I'm still so yeah. Ubu Dolph is still in between us, right? Yes. All right, I. I guess I'm gonna get close to him, but right behind him. Okay. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna be within like grabbing range of him if okay. I need to later. All right. And that's it. Uh, the swarm of tools goes next and is just going to occupy the space of Helene, uh, and Uwudolf. uh, uh -huh. and they're going to make some jabs in the area here. Uh, 16 to hit and 17 to hit. So that'll hit both of you at least one time for each. Um, Helene, both as the tools come slamming and swirling around here, they will deal 15 piercing damage. Oh. Rudolph takes <clears throat> 17 piercing damage. And he goes, Whoa, oh, 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 it hurts so bad. Captain Elena, looking at all of this mess here, uh, what, what do we do? Well, um, and she's going to attempt to to hit the swarm with her scimitar and deal a little bit of damage to it, taking out one of the swirling tools. Does not go super well. Okay. Pine. Welcome back to Spelljammer. Holidays in space. Spasse. Spasse. <laughs> Holidays. In, that's the first time I've said space. Oh, I said a spasse, and I just slammed my own microphone. I. This is a mess. This is a mess. I, I couldn't have asked for more. Pine Sol, Now that we can see and hear you, and you can see and and look at the map, what do you want to? What do you want to do? What, 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 what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to cast Fairy Fire. Okay. I want you to keep in mind how large of an area Fairy Fire is. 
Never mind. It will <laughs> hit all your friendos. Now, you can kind of like center it at a point where I think it might only hit the, the swarm. Because it's like you could like cast it out here, and I think it you know could potentially only hit some people. I think it's a twenty foot square. It's big. Yeah. So you could risk an attack of opportunity and then like cast it somewhere over here, and hopefully it just hits this thing. I change my mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Also, you still only have 11 HP on my screen. I hope that is not actually the case. Uh, yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there we go. All right. What do you want to do? All right. We're going to do uh, Scorching Ray. Okay. Scorching Ray is a, or, uh, a ranged attack. So you are like close in melee in this. So it's going to be hard for you to yep. cast these. All right. So they will be with disadvantage at this range. Cool. Uh-huh. Okay. First, me... first one's a 13. That does hit. Yep. And then I need two more because these are three rays. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, hold on. Let me do... Let's see here. Uh. Nice. Nice. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All of these I clicked hit. the disadvantage button, too. Yeah, you did great. Uh, okay. All of these will hit. So what I want you to do is click Scorching Ray in uh, the chat underneath all of those, uh, those little dealios, the ones that hit. You're going to hit that. It's going to roll that damage. Nice. Eight, eight, and six. Not bad. All right. So 22 total points of fire damage delivered to the swarm of tools. You note now, however, as you blast away with the fire, they seem to be pretty resistant to the fire itself. You knock a That's couple right. of the tools out of the air, but unfortunately, it doesn't deal as much as you would hope. Hmm. You have a bonus action and movement remaining, though you, you know, you're you kind of in the mix right now. Yeah, because I would be getting an attack of opportunity. Yes. Or giving them an attack of opportunity. Correct. I am going to dig my feet in the snow even more. Okay. Uwudolf, <laughs> being inside the swarm here, is... <laughs> <laughs> swings his his maul wildly. Uh, he has a very large hammer. Um, so he's going to make two attacks with his maul. He's going to hit twice. Good job, Uwudolf. He's going he's gonna to deal about uh, 12 points damage. Heck yeah, buddy. As more of the tools are knocked out of the air. Uh, Telfy is going to attempt to stab with a tiny little knife of a short sword. She misses. Good job, Telfy. Helene! Yeah, yeah! Um, so, okay. So this isn't a being, but... Yes. Is there... Is the, so out of one of these weapons flying around, is there a hilt I can grab and use shocking grasp on? Sure. And there are I ones made I, of metal. I'll, you know what? Shock and grasp with advantage if you want. Yeah, I want, so I just don't, like, the only thing I'm worried about is it hitting Uwu Dolph. Uh, but I don't know okay. how this, I'm not sure how this swarm necessarily works. It's a tornado of tools. You can, like, reach out and try and nab one of these and, and shock it. Yeah. I want to use my quick dexterity to grab a metal object and shock the shit out of it. All right, sounds good. Uh, you can oh, roll with advantage just advantage. in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Hey. That's a nat 20 with that advantage. We love to see it. Let's go. So shock it. Hit shock and grasp well, you don't here. Want to, you don't want to shock the shit out of it. <laughs> what? What's wrong, cat? You okay? <laughs> We've lost her. It's over. Yeah, you ever just, you're, you're just going up to like, you know, a bunch of weapons and... You ever, you ever just go up to something and, you know, it's like pissing you off. It's like really just, you know, you're just chilling there and having, you know, you're having a time reminds and then you just, you grab it. Reminds and you just me of my mother. Of it. <laughs> it reminds me of my mother when she gets really frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roll that shock and grasp damage on the crit there. Oops. Uh, do, do, 
do do 19 total points of lightning damage damn uh yeah guess what that'll be enough sick as you shock the shit out of it and it goes down and the tools clatter to the ground all around you here into the snow Udolf looks up and goes, oh, yeah, Thank you for your assistance. Uh, yeah, uh, it didn't really help my nose so much, though. Uh, but, um, I, I, what? Your nose? You have a problem weird, with your nose? Weird I don't, things it, are I happening just... all, over the, all over the workshop these days. Something odd is happening. Why? Uh, I don't know. Ever <sighs> since the vault got broken into. Do you guys have like a gnome problem or something? What's going on here? His eyes light up and his nose glows a little bit more red. Gnomes? No, I don't think so. Yeah, gnomes. I, I mean, I notice you got, you got, I, I know, I know an elfling whenever I see one. I know what that is. Hey! What? What? I'm an elf. Look, look at the ears. You can see the ears. I, I'm an elf, right? Yeah. I know. And I know you guys have these problems with gnomes. I was just, just a random question. Just poking. <sighs> Telfy will sigh. Well, uh, Rudolph, they're, they're here to help. And, um, well, good luck with the tools and finishing some of the things, I guess. We're gonna go visit the missus. Um, and she kind of, like, wrings her hands here. And Rudolph looks at you. Well, all right. Well, if you need anything, um, or if I yell for help, maybe come out and help me. Are you allergic to something? I'm allergic to everything. It's a painful existence. <laughs> yeah, this is why I don't like fleshy noses. Remember what I said, Helen? You know, I don't know fleshy nose. This is one reason why, you know? I get it. You know, this guy's got a big one. You know, Helene. I put my hand on, put one of my hands on their shoulder, and it's like I gotta reach up because they're way taller than me. Has anyone told you? Never mind. What? I know why you're. I I I understand now why you get rocks. What? We'll work on that. Hmm. I don't know if we're going to get along. <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> so, Telfy, standing next to you, goes, Uh, yeah, all right. Um, so let's go. Uh, He's going to lead you uh, into the uh, interior of the house. A large dining room. She shuts the door behind you here. The Great Hall is a 50-foot-long wooden table, splits the room in almost two enormous chairs at the head in the front of a wide fireplace that crackles with merry flames. She'll continue on uh, kind of down the way until she leads you into a couple of doors and what looks to be a bit of a kitchen on the other side of the, the wall here. I'm just going to kind of pull everyone into a tiny little little kitchen over here. And, uh, you're gonna be meeting, uh, well, someone, smile, the <laughs> missus, um, is inside. She has Bro. large, <laughs> floppy ears, a smiley little face, <laughs> and big, mitteny paws. <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen smells delightful. Mrs. Claws moves like an orderly whirlwind, mixing ingredients, shaping dough, and ferrying an almost nonstop stream of cookies in and out of the oven. As you arrive, she says, Oh, couldn't you make yourself useful and maybe, um, perhaps fetch me some milk? And Telfy comes sc scattering into the room. Miss, Mrs. Claus, no, no, uh, they're here to help us. They're here to help with the whole uh, vault thing. She goes, Goodness, of course, of course. Uh, welcome, welcome to the workshop. Um, who are you? 
Oh, look at you. You're so cute. <laughs> You're so cute yourself. Um, what is your name? I am Mrs. Claus. Last Hi. time I told somebody my I'm name, Pine they Ball. looked. Hi. They looked at a list and got a little weird face. That one, that that little elf, looked at me weird when I said my name. Telfy, you're really tall. Telfy looks up at Mrs. Claus and just. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it is fine. And yes, I've gotten quite tall these days. Uh, well, welcome, welcome. I'm glad that you are here to assist in this. My husband recently has been well. Quite odd. And perhaps we shall meet him in a little while. She looks actually nervous. Ever since the vault was broken into, he just hasn't been himself. He's making all of these claims about delivering the presents to both naughty and nice people this year. That's impossible. You can't be doing that. That's what I said. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Pine so hold on. Just wait, wait a second. Let, let's see how this goes. But there's nothing else. I mean, there's, that's, that's his plan. Is that he is yeah, going yeah, yeah. to? Let's just. I, I just say let's let's just let it let's just see how it goes. You know. Apparently, I'm on this list that I, we're not supposed to get presents. I've never gotten a present in my life. I don't know what's. I, what, why don't I get presents? Um. What was your name again? And she pulls out this because enormous Because the things that come tone. out of your mouth are me. She pulls I'm out the mean. book. And puts it down on the table next to where she's making cookies. He goes, "What's your name?" Yeah, it, it's it's Helene, and then uh, whispers so nobody hears the last name. Uh, I'm sorry, Helene. What? I whisper in her ear. Oh, okay. She knows. Oh, oh. And she begins flipping to your page of the book, and looking down <laughs> at it, she looks up at you, and just. Gives you a very sad smile. Oh, Helene. What's what's that? What, what, what? Helene, um, what are some of the atrocities on the list? Um, well, there was the uh there was the dude at the bar who he Okay. It looked like he was trying to touch my butt. It looked like it. He was gra it, it, apparently he was just grabbing, you know, his beverage from the other table. It looked like he was trying to grab it, but I may have cut his hand off. Um, yes. Just pure reaction, you know. This uh, life on the rock is tough. Um, there were these traders that came in, and they looked like they were rich enough. Um, they looked like they had money, and you know. I didn't have any, so I went and grabbed some things and took it home and sold it. And I didn't realize that they were not necessarily valuables. They were more family heirlooms that they cared about and stuff. I, it was it was purely for so that I could survive. I, I she puts a mitten on your shoulder and goes, Helene, candy from an actual baby? I didn't mean to. Well, it says here in the book, you went, where is the smallest baby that I can steal candy from? And then you went and did it. <gasps> I was told by, I was told by one of the people that, uh, that advised me. I do not recall. Oh, of course, of course, but the book always knows. That's fine. Helene, you are here now, and you are assisting. That is very, very kind of you. Would you like, perhaps, a cookie? Uh, sure. Oh, good. I make full-fat all-butter cookies. Oh, um, yeah, sure, sure. Uh... Perfect. <laughs> and she will hand out cookies to everyone. Uh, Mrs. Claus, full fat, all butter cookies uh, are indeed a magical item. Uh, that's... Oh, that's how you spell her name. I get it now. Mrs. Claus? Yeah, like Claus, like Claus of a... Anyways, 
as an action, eat a biscuit, even though Mrs. Claus would prefer you take your time and enjoy it with a cup of tea, and you'll regain 3d4 plus 3 hit points and one spell slot of maximum level 1d4 plus 1. If you eat a cookie, you become full. If you try to eat anything else, you must succeed on a DC 20 con save or throw it up. <sighs> Sorry, I had to quickly die for a second. <laughs> so, just enjoy these cookies. Hmm? I guess I'll just, you know, all right, take a bite. Yeah, it's delicious. Uh, very filling, very quickly. Uh, and you can re recover if you want to roll 3d4. Uh, you can do so. 3d4 plus 3 and recover some hit points. 3d. Now, this whole mystery about the, um, well, the vault being broken into, have we made any headway? Well, you see, Mrs. Claus. May I call you just Claus? I suppose that's fine, yes. Excellent. So, we're here to ask a couple of questions about, you know, the problem with the vault, you know, and maybe help you, you know, out with this, because we can't let this stand. Hmm. Well, I do appreciate all of the assistance, and Telfi has been trying so desperately to get everything back in order before it's time for gift, miss. Exactly. So we're going to need you to be completely honest with us, okay? Which I know isn't a problem for you, Claus. Of course not. It's a really only problem for Elaine, it seems like. So, what I'm going to need to know is what exactly is in the vault. Oh, well, the vault is where we were keeping most of the gifts for all the good little people of the Astral Plane. And now, they're all gone. So my husband has decided upon himself that we'll just deliver to everyone this year. He's not feeling very, um, well, good-natured. He's been quite snappy with me, which he never is. Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just making cookies, making cookies. Hmm. You look a little distressed. No, oh, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. <clears throat> He's just not himself these days, and if we can find out what happened to all of the presents inside the vault, that would be very great, thank you. She, she cries a little bit, a little tear rolling down her fur. Well, Claus, no, I don't, don't, like this don't, uh, don't get your whiskers bent up, you know, we'll figure this out. Well, I do mm. appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Um, I may may kill this guy. Just saying. Blessings be upon you. You can't kill Mr. Claus, you crazy! Uh, he's not acting right. Well, don't kill him. He's my husband. Okay. I'm sure he's just feeling a little down about the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably, you know what, it happens, you know, maybe you got into some, you know, some catnip, you know, it's very common sometimes, you know, to make them think, you know, straight and all that kind of stuff. Oh, all right, mm -hmm. yes, perhaps, perhaps that. I I'm just going to continue busying myself with the cookies and, um, well. There's a slamming sound as a door from outside and you can hear a swirling of wind in the great hall and a voice calls out. Wife! Wife! Bring me cookies! Uh, don't worry. I'll do it. No, 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 no. I'll take the cookies. We'll take the cookies. Yeah, I got a little something, something to put on these cookies. Reach into my pouch. My moist pouch. <laughs> Gross. Mm. Uh-huh, yes? A sprinkle a bit on the cookies. Oh, what are you doing to my cookies? No, 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 no. It's okay. I'm a... This is the secret pine saw recipe. Pine? It's been I passed in. down. What you're doing is very naughty. naughty. What? This is the ultimate... <laughs> <laughs> 
What are you talking about? This? No, it's to help purge any poison that he may have been ingesting. Wife, mm -hmm. bring me the cookies. I, I we just start don't want to. We just don't want to yeah. make sure that he knows about it because we want him to eat it. So that way we get all the poison or whatever the heck he might have eaten, just in case. She looks worriedly at you as you and Helene and Captain Elena enter the Great Hall once again. Uh, as I drag everyone over here. And the man himself sits at the head of the table. One Klaus. In a red hat, big white beard, and mischievous eyes. You aren't my wife. Who are you? I'm about to be your worst nightmare. What? No, 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 no. Mr. Claus. It's Klaus. Klaus. Can I just call you Mr.? No. <gasps> Give me the Enough. cookies now, this instant, you insolent bug. Oh. He looks at you and glares. Do not make me get up from this chair. Oh yeah, what are you gonna do, huh? You call me a bug. You're supposed to be really nice and stuff, and. Kindness has no, gotten me guy... nowhere. No, no, it no, is no, no, time no. This guy's, this guy's for us messed up. to be little I don't think. Nice. I don't think my little heart can take much more of this. I have to step away for a second. Captain Elaine is looking around and is like, um, perhaps we should just give him the cookies. Nope. Nope. You better apologize. You, you gotta, you gotta apologize. Apologize to yep. the bug. <laughs> well, no, no. Absolutely. Your, your wife. First, your wife. Not. My wife. Yeah. My yeah. wife. Who could yep. not keep our things from being stolen. Perhaps she was the thief. Uh, Biometrically coded now. vault that only I and she and Uwudolf could access. And yet, she has not come clean to her crimes. She has been exceptionally naughty. You're a real big meanie, you know that? Hmm. Well, you're a big meanie for holding back on these cookies. Here. Here's the cookies. Put the cookies in front of him here. Is, yes. Yes. It is time. <laughs> yes. And he'll take a big bite of the cookie you put the goo on. He goes, Bleh. Oh, what is this? What is this awfulness? You've attempted to poison me. Are you going to throw up now? No, but you will be detained. Guards! Grab uh, I charge, like... it. I, I Wait, charge I Mr. It. Klaus. Yeah, sure. Okay. As you charge Mr. Klaus, Mr. Klaus is going to summon some creatures that kind of look like, I don't know, uh, this... At the end of the Great Hall, they go and come pounding down uh, the Great Hall area where you're now in combat with Mr. Klaus. Go ahead and roll me some initiative. I wanted to punch him earlier, but I didn't want to jump the gun. You wanted to punch him. Well, now you get your chance to punch him. Move the map a little. Hey, okay. Can we get a sound bite of a Stella laugh for the, for the sound of the snowman? <laughs> yeah, a little gremlin laugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Where is my sheet? It was literally just here a second ago. I don't know. What did you do? There we go. All right. Little snow golems. All right. 
and I'll get Elena on here as well. Oh, wow. Looks like Mr. Klaus is going to go last. Good for him. Uh, so, Elena, please. There we go. All right. Helene, at the top of the turn order, what do you want to do? Oh, I'm mid charge. I'm charging yeah, just right running at him. right at him. Okay, perfect. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna do a. Uh... <laughs> it wouldn't be like I, I I wouldn't do it with my weapons. I don't think I would. I would just straight up run as fast as I could, trying to palm him right in the freaking nose. Okay. Yeah. You run up and you try to punch him in the face. Make me an athletics check as you try to hit him. Bam. Uh, yeah, all right. That will unfortunately just miss as Bam. Mr. Klaus is able to get out of the way. All right, well, I missed. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess I just look at him with like, like arms up, ready to fight him. Okay. Uh... Next up in the order is going to be all of these these golems. So many golems. All right. The first one is going to come up to Pine here. The second one is also going to make their way this direction. Aline, you would end up being next to the big man himself. Uh, and then we have the last is going to run up on Sartell. The golems are going to attempt to slam me with their tiny little arms. Uh, 19 and 23 to hit Pine? Uh... uh yeah. I would like to use my warding flare on both. Oh. You get one reaction, so you get to choose one. Oh, dang it. Um, uh, hmm. What was the rolls again? 19 and 23. I'll do the largest one, the 23, the last one. Okay. Uh, with disadvantage. Ah, becomes a 13, Pine. Which that one will then end Does up missing not... you. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you'll only t you'll take seven bludgeoning and seven cold. Okay. The other one is going to attack mm. Elena here, slamming with its tiny little hands, and is going to miss. Fortunately enough for her, Sartell is going to be able to counterattack here, hacking down with her scimitar a couple of times. She's going to only get to hit once, dealing six points of damage. Fantastic. Uh, the last of the little golems is going to hop up on the table and throw a snowball at Helene. The snowball goes flying Wonderful. across the room here. 16 to hit on Helene, which will do so for eight bludgeoning and six cold damage. Pine, what would you like to do? Pine? Yep. I just thought of something. Uh, oh. Ah, 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 ah. Maybe. Ha. Huh. Uh, let's see here. That says fire. That says burning hands. Yes. Okay, so you would like to cast the spell burning hands? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it is a 15-foot cone of fire! I'm assuming down at these boys here that, uh... Uh, are probably pretty susceptible to, I don't know, fire. And he said, fifth, yeah, 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it hits this guy too. I don't think it hits this one because he's like, it's exactly 15. Uh, yeah, it's a 15 foot cone. Okay, so yeah, so, so it you're hits gonna all hit of them. Everyone. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Uh, you've got the roll there. I need to deck save this. It is 13 fire damage. Dexterity saving throws one, two, three and four. These guys are not very dexterous. I rolled a three, a zero, a four, and a ten. All of them yep. take 13 fire damage. Wow. Hell yeah. As, guess what? Turns out, tiny little snowmen, susceptible to fire damage. They begin to melt very, very quickly. Uh, some of them becoming very injured. One of them dying outright in front of Elena. Just gone, melting, <laughs> melting, melting. The rest of them becoming very much injured here due to the flames of pine. Okay. So I do have a question though. Yes, what's up? Uh, is the table flammable? Flammable. Do you want to set it on fire? Yes. 
Yeah, it's on fire. <laughs> yes! <gasps> We're gonna be burning down the, the Klaus's home. Okay. Table's on fire! All right, Pine. Bonus action or otherwise. Well, let's see here. Which one? Oh, the one by uh, hers that. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and... I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna end my turn next to, next to both of these little guys. Okay. Aline, yeah. as you stand here next to Klaus, you realize that he's so, so cold, an aura so chilly. Next to him, you take three cold damage. And he looks up at you and goes, Jeez. <laughs> it seems the jig is up. And he disappears, revealing in his stead another creature, something else entirely, a skeletal, somewhat am amalgamation of things and flesh and belongings in front of you. Cold, dead eyes, glowing blue, chattering teeth. Yes, fine. Then I will do this all my damn self. Who needs gift, miss? Anyway, he's going to cast. Uh, ooh, let's do. It's sands. It's evil sands. It's evil sands. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. He is going to cast a spell called influenza, with a mighty sneeze that can be heard up to a hundred feet away. He blasts forth a cone of phlegm, halitosis, and viral pathogens. I need everyone in the room susceptible to being sick to roll me a constitution saving throw. And yes, for those of you at home, this is a spell that is just made up. Stop. Yes, it's fake. It doesn't exist in the book, okay? It's fine. We can make things up and have fun. God. Oh no, those are roll low rolls. All right, uh, Elena, let's see. Elena with a con save. Rolls a 21, so she will save. But Helene and Pine, a four and an eight here for 4d8. I use my 20. You wanna use your, you're supposed to call it beforehand, <laughs> damn it, cat. <laughs> Next time, call it first. But yes, you can use one of them. You have multiple. I was trying, I, I wanted to build up, you know, for uh, for suspense. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 right. yeah, that's what it is. Okay, well, one of your <laughs> nap 20s is gone. So you will save against this as is 4d8. Poison damage. Uh, let me roll that real quick. I am for twenty, uh, and those that failed are poisoned. So pine not poisoned Poison. will take ten. Sartell not poisoned will take ten. Aline twenty points of poison damage and the poisoned condition. Now I this have nineteen health points. So you just go down? Uh, if the math checks out, yup. That is, yeah, that Helene. Why do you only have 19 hit points? An almighty sneeze. I got hit so hard. An almighty sneeze puts Helene down and poisoned on the ground. Okay. And the creature here, what was claws, we think, laughs uproariously at this turn of events. Um, Helene? I need a death saving throw. Okay. That's a four. <sighs> yep. Okay. The remaining snow golems are going to attempt to beat up on Pine here. Uh, the two that are there. They're gonna be doing a little little slammy slam, a little slammy slam. Uh, the first one misses on a five. The second one will just hit on a 15, unless you want to do your reaction warding flare. Warding flare. Okay, reaction so I'm, warding I'm flare. I'm keeping track of them. Another flash of light in the area. The little golems go, Aah! and he misses. That's an eight. He's gonna be unable to hit you here. Uh, Great. Sartell is going to run up this way. Pine, Pine, can you get a lean up? And is going to attack uh, the creature. Is going to attack with the scimitar twice. Uh, 24 will hit for four damage. Wow, not not super great. Not super great. The last of the golem starts his turn in the fire and burns to death. 
Goodbye, little golem. Death. Pine. I will go ahead and look. I will use burning hands once more, but okay. I will use it at level one. Okay. So instead of upcasting here, we're just going to do the little, little burning hands action in the air. Uh, dexterity saving throws from them. Boop, boop. Five and two, they die. They're dead. They're gone. Excellent. They're gone. I would then like to use my... <clears throat> I would then like to use my mass healing word and my bonus action. Okay. Uh, so you've already cast a leveled spell, which means you cannot cast two leveled spells on the same turn. Yes. Really? Yep. Oh, well. I will then use my movement instead. There you go. Five, five, 15, 20, and I will shove a cookie in Helene's mouth hole. <laughs> Helene's already had one of the cookies, right? I think that's bad, right? If you have more than one of the cookies, uh, you have to roll a constitution saving throw, DC 20, or vomit. <laughs> Removing all of the positive right. effects of the cookie. Oh. <laughs> Here we go! Shit. <laughs> Helene, after getting the cookie shoved in their mouth, vomits everywhere and is still unconscious. <laughs> As dying, just... <laughs> Um, <laughs> Helene, you do get another nat 20. You have three, but you're still on the ground. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. Okay. At the end of that. I just got to succeed once, right? What do you mean? For, for, for death saves? No, 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 no. Death saves are three successes all three? or three failures. And... If you take damage while you're down, it's an auto failure. Oh, cool. At the start okay. of yeah. the creature's turn, the skeletal man, the cold around you hurts you. Cool. All this right. This is going to Boom. deal. That's two. Damage. Yep. So Halid suffers another death saving throw failure. Sartell and Pine Saul uh, will take three points of cold damage. Uh, and you're watching as Helene is beginning to freeze over. The creature looks at you and just starts laughing. And he is going to misty step away. Just boop over here. And look at you all. And is going to cast a, uh, a nice little ray of frost over at Captain uh, Sartell. It's going to be a 16 to hit, which will, or we love it. One cold damage. Great job. All right. <laughs> um, Helene, yep. you, you have to be successful on this death save. Can I use a 20? Or you die. No, because we've done no natural 20s for death saves. Cool. All right. Well, here we go. One success. Woo. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sartell looks at the now vomit covered Helene and goes, oh, poor Helene. Pine, get her up. And is going to rush forward again to try and keep the creature occupied. Uh, With her scimitar here. She hits twice for a nice 12 points of damage. Pine, what do you want to do? Yeah, okay. Am I allowed to use my bonus action first? Yes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cast Mass Healing Word. Okay, love that. With Mass Healing Word, eight points of healing for all of your friends in the room to bring... Helene back to consciousness who fortunately this type of poison does not affect your healing it affects lots of other things though and Elena also receiving eight and Pine you also receive eight so what does that mean do I go to one HP 
you go to eight. Oh, eight. Oh, the, the, you just said that. And then I would like to use my light crossbow. Okay. That is a one pine that is going to miss wildly. Okay. My hands are just a little cold. A little cold. Do you want to move at all? Yeah, go move. Five, ten, fifteen. Ah. Imagine. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. And right there, on the table. Perfect, on the table. Uh, great. You are just inside the cold radius, so you'll take three points of cold damage. Ah, fiddlesticks. <laughs> and the creature, a skeletal man's. Yes. Come closer. Come closer. And he's going to mass life leech, uh, which will affect just the two in front of him here. He does not have the range to get to Helene, but Pine and Elena... Uh, I need you to roll Constitution saving throws. Are you P Pine? Do I roll a con save? Are you contemplating utilizing? Okay. Sartel I was contemplating it. Gotcha. But Sart go ahead. I'm not gonna do it. Sartel got a 12. You got an 11. That is not gonna be enough. Uh, it'll be 2d8 plus the spellcasting modifier for eight points leached from both of you. And you watch as the bit of damage he has taken be just goes away as he heals himself from leeching the life from you. <laughs> Merry gift, miss, everyone. Merry gift miss Helene you are conscious you are on the ground and you are poisoned while poisoned in this way I need you to uh, roll me a d10 okay on a 7 do, 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 do. on a 7 you get to attempt to make the constitution saving throw again Okay. That is a three. You are continuously racked by these coughing fits as you are afflicted with the influenza. But you do get to take your turn as normal. I love how, like, you gave this to my character and then all of a sudden my allergies start kicking in and start <laughs> sniffling. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. So, she's pissed, obviously doesn't, you know, really go down very easily. Sure. Not something uh, in her repertoire. So uh, she's like looking down and starts whispering something and you, you just see her eyes go from black and starry to just straight white. And uh, she just looks over towards Mr. Skelly whatever butthead and, uh, and just cast, uh, we're going to cast Sacred Flame on him. Okay. He has to make a dexterity saving DC throw here. Yeah, DC 14. Whoop. That is a four. Uh, Let's go. Oh. Yeah, he is going to take all 12 points of radiant damage here. Nice. She's pissed. She doesn't use Sacred Flame very often. This is a special occasion. Okay. Excellent. Uh, oh, math. Joel, the other direction. Math, the other direction. Helene, that is an action. You have bonus action and movement remaining. Um, <clears throat> I think she's going to stay here. I've got nothing. I don't think my bonus actions do anything useful here. Um, okay. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Captain Elena is still going to make her attacks here, as she has been doing so. Uh, slap, slap. 
Uh, the 20 hits for seven. Nicely done. Captain Elena Sartell. Pine, what would you like to do? Hey, well, hey, look, that was pretty cool. I, I'll do the same thing. Okay. Where is it? A sacred flame. All right, yeah. Uh, no, no, that was mine. I was just looking at it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Dexterity save oh, this I already did time. It. I already rolled. He rolls a 17. He is ready for it and will dodge out of the way of the radiant energy. Yep. Yeah, this, this guy, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna back up and I'm gonna go. Yeah, out of the uh, cold. Tough. Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right. Yeah, right there. All right. I'm good. At the top of the turn, Elena's going to take three more points of cold damage, and our friend here is going to aura burst of cold. He climbs up on the table and goes, <laughs> Merry gift, miss! And a torrent of cold air comes flowing out of him. I need con saves from the room, please. Oh, God. Helene, Helene. Helene, can I please make another suggestion? You have three natural 20s to spend. You have eight oh, yeah. HP. <laughs> please pick to use them at some <laughs> point in time because this is going to kill you. I forget you. about him. <laughs> There's a list. I forget about it him. says boons. You can leave it up. It has it has your how many you have there. There in your journal. You can do it. Anyways, this is gonna this is gonna hurt. I think Captain Elena is gonna get hit too. Okay, yep. Uh, it's gonna be three d six cold damage and applies the effects of the slow spell upon failure. Aline, take ten points of cold damage. Yep, on the ground. Okay, uh, Sartell will take 10 How points much of cold damage. cold damage was that? Pine will take 10 points of cold damage. Okay, and you are under the effects of a slow spell. Um, so, with this, that means you have half of your movement. Uh, if you make an attack action, you only get one attack, which generally doesn't mean much for, for Pine. Uh, and you have no reactions. Uh, Helene, fortunately for you, when you were brought back up, it resets your death saves. So you're back at zero, zero. Okay. Uh, so... We're, we're doing, are we rolling again? Is it my turn? Yes, it is your turn. So I need a death save from you as you go back down. Are that you? is one failure. Uh... Sartell, under the effects of the cold, is only going to be able to make one attack here. He hits for eight slashing damage. Fine. Why has this guy got an AoE effect in such a small room? He's OP. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cast once again uh, Mass Healing healing word yeah okay for seven Aline back at seven mm. HP I'm back. Sartell recovering mm. some of her HP as well uh pine you also gain the seven now you still have yeah, a... you know it's really funny is I did not I did not the eight the last time you didn't I told you to you can do it <laughs> you can do it there we go. Okay, we're we are current and we are we are current. Okay. Okay. I'm now gonna use my movement. Uh, so your movement is halved. Keep that in mind. Yep. Okay. Five, ten, fifteen. Am I in hitting? Like, am I in melee distance from yeah, him? So, so you are under the effects of the slow spell, which means you only get to do your bonus action yeah. or action. So you've done your bonus action. Oh, okay. So do you want to change? I'm gonna stand you in the to? cold. You're gonna stand Again. in the cold. We're standing. Nope, in the I'm gonna cold. stand right in the cold. All right. Technically, I'm by the fire, so I'm. My brain's like, you know, maybe I'll get warm by the fire. You know, the burning table. Yes, the burning table. 
Um, okay. So from here, he is going to cast... Uh, ooh. Yeah, he's going to do magic missile. And uh, probably give one for everyone here. Let's see how that goes. Five, five, and five. All right. Sartell's five. Helene, five. Pine, five points of damage. One more than I need. Okay. All right. That being said, Helene, what do you want to do? Oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to back up a little bit to the corner. Just to make the most distance that it possibly can. Okay. Oh boy. And uh and, and dude, she's she's still pissed. We're just gonna send the sacred flame over there again. So you are still poisoned by the influenza. I need you to roll me a I got, D10. I <sighs> okay. Uh-huh. Okay, a six. Again, still poisoned by it, but you can act as normal. So you're going to do Sacred Flame okay. here. Mm -hmm. And you know, fortunately, hopefully not go down. He fails. That is a six. Oh, You'll take so. 11 radiant damage. Okay. Uh, and at the end of your turn, you can make another con save against the poison. Okay. He says, and then tries to remind you that... Aline, you have three natural 20s. I do have three, but do I care about that or not getting hit by the other sh stuff? You have three. <laughs> <laughs> do you not want to use it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just use it. Too. Okay, then you you break the poison. <laughs> you overcome the, the sickness of influenza. Great. I'm not sick anymore. It's still... This guy's still gonna hit me. I can they know it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Sartell is still just... I mean, she's just, she's just gonna try and hit this guy over and over again with her scimitar. She's not dead yet. She's got a natural 20. That's gonna hit for seven points of damage. Good job. Well done, Captain Elena Sartell. Pine Saw. Ah. Yes. I'm going to use my war hammer. AKA uh, my lamp post. The lamp post. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to click a button, another button, not the one that made it, you know, that made it long, but I'm going to click another button, you know. And this one has like, it's a yellow butt. All right, just to clarify, it's a cool yellow butt. I click it, and it goes, tick, 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 ding, and the light turns on. <laughs> and it does, and a, a 17 is gonna hit. 10 bludgeoning damage, ka-slam. Excellent. You have a bonus action remaining, Pine, if you would like to use it. I'm still frozen though, right? Uh, no, so that was from the For previous the thing, yeah. Okay. Is there anything else you want to do? Shoving is an action, right? It is. Um, you know... Let me double check. Oh gosh. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna use a. I'm gonna use one last, one last mass healing word, and that's all I got. Okay. Who are you giving it to? That's all I got in the tank. Oh, one mass healing word. Oh, jeez. Yeah. You, you have one a... last mass healing word. Okay. I was gonna say you have other spells. That's all slots. I got. You got other stuff you could do. Now nope, by doing that one. Okay. Six healing for the group. And now in my turn. Okay. Keeping Elena 
healthy enough here. Uh, that being said, it is at the top of his turn. Uh, everyone in his aura takes three cold damage. So that's fun. Uh, and then he is going to look at you, Pine, and like as the fires on the table are burning here, and he looks. <laughs> Come here, you. Mary. I'll go ahead and. Gift miss. <laughs> He's going to reach out, Gifmas. grab you, and I'm going to use my natural 20 on Pine Saw. Uh, mm -hmm. He is going to... I have a question. Yes. Can I use my warding flare against him? Not against these bot natural 20s. These are just auto, like, you guys do this too. Auto success. These hit. All right. Okay. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. He is going to reach out <laughs> and touch you for 10d10 cold damage. 10, 15, 20. Okay. The 10d10 is 75 cold damage. What the? Jesus. I, that's ah snickerdoodles <laughs> I'm down and out pine will go down I'm an ice sculpture <laughs> pine is a, a cute little ice sculpture on the ground okay he laughs who's next I'll make statues of all of you what a merry gift miss Cindy Helene. Mm. Mm hmm. I don't think <laughs> I got no support moves, man. man <laughs> turn me to ice. That's not very nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm just. A, I'm afraid of throwing a tinder box at you. <laughs> just in case, in case it just hurts more. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I've got to shoot my magic missiles. Okay. Because, well, actually, I don't have to do that. I could use another d20, roll or natural 20. And uh, I'm going to throw my other dagger at him. Yes. Yes, do, do that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, do that. Do that! All right. So, what this is going to do uh, is as you kind of like, you have to approach a little bit to throw the dagger in his direction. It is going to hit. Yeah, is it, was it 30, 30 feet? Yeah. Uh, I think it's 20. Is it 20? I think it's 20. Uh, range 20. Yeah, 20 is 60. You're 20 like, slash you're... 60 was the 60 mean. So, that means your normal range is up to 20 feet. Between 20 and 60 is at disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Beyond 60 is impossible. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, I just want to get just in range. Okay. What is that? That is... It's like 10 feet. Like right, right here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh. What I want you to do... Because you're going to get sneak attack for this too. Because Sartell is right there. Uh, you're going to roll me dagger. And we're mm -hmm. just going to use that. And uh, you're going to roll... Let's see. The amount of dice rolled here is going to be... <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me double check that it's d4s. <laughs> if I didn't use the d20, it would be another natural one. What is wrong with me? So I need you to roll me 2d4 and then 6d6. And then we add three to the end of that. Okay. Can I do it all in one thing? Absolutely. You can do slash R space and then type out the, the formula there. Mm -hmm. 2D4 plus so 2D4 and 66? 66 plus 3. Okay, plus 3. In retribution for 36 points of damage. The 2D4s were maxed, by the way. That's great. <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> for 36 <laughs> points of damage, what does this look like as you kill the skeletal creature? Oh man, I mean, she's so like, na na like she went from having white eyes to just like uh, anime, just squinted, ding, 
and just just she was randy johnson on the mound just wailing this thing sardarm just whipping it as far as as fast as she could just right right at the the freaking spinal cord and it does it hits and it severs <sighs> you you've not seen the last of nasta claws um I'm gonna go ahead and just drop then this. She says, Ice la vista, baby. I'm gonna just go ahead and drop this bad boy uh, out here uh, for everyone at home. The draw from the deck of many for Helene today is the rogue, or sorry, it should have been the rogue card. Anyways, the fates card. So one day, whenever you would like, you get to alter fate. Whatever thing happens, you just get to be like, no, it happened slightly differently. <laughs> that is just in your fate pocket. Or just alter it? Uh, so when you like when something happens, you get to change it and be like, no, it actually happened this way. Whenever that okay. happens. Comedy or utility, I have to ponder. Okay. Oh, you do need to ponder, but we're not done yet because <laughs> Pine is still on the ground here, Helene, and after the throw goes off, and Nasta Claws poofs into a bunch of snow <laughs> on the table. Was... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> poofs into a bunch of snow on the table. <laughs> Elena Sartell comes you know, diving across, uh, attempting to drag Pine away from all of the fire uh, and is going to, well, take one of those cookies. Pine, you haven't had one of the cookies yet, right? No. Nope. Good. Going to give you one of the cookies. For 3d4 plus 3 healing for a total of 10. And Pine, you're back to consciousness and combat ends in the Great Hall. Hey, Pine, you okay? You alright? Uh, I'm a little chilly. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get checked for any ice burns. Cause uh, that guy sucked. That guy was a dweeb. Yeah, it sounds really bad. I got really mad. Things just went red for a second. Uh no, everything kinda went a little uh old blue for me, you know. Hmm, okay. Yeah, we probably hey, uh... stuff like that. Hey, uh, uh, thanks, thanks for, thanks for, you know, picking me back up. I appreciate it. Yeah, I forgot the eat one of those cookies, so sorry for stuffing it down your throat and making you vomit everywhere. Is that why I was, felt like I was dreaming of a party night and just puking everywhere? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, well, now what are we gonna well, do? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel so good. Um, is, uh, should we, should we tell the, the lady, the cat in the other room? Ms. Cause? You want to uh, tell yeah, her that I, her husband kicked her asses? I, oh, honey. Um, and turned us into an ice sculpture? Well, me in particular, not really I, you. I don't think that's her husband. I think he's somewhere else. That's not very nice, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, couples have, you know, complications and there's, you know, places they can go to to work it out and talk about it, you know, like, like adults responsibly and stuff like that, you know? Mm -mm, no, no if that was really him, I, I, oh, I he deserved to die. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Is you, what? What is wrong with I, you? I, and you wonder what? why you get rocks all the time. All right, you know what? I'm a handle it. I'm a, I think... You know, he I'll, was, I'll he, this guy was not being okay. He needed to, he deserved to be put to down. Elaine, listen, I don't know you that well, and I'm about to have a heart to heart with you, all right? And you're not gonna mm -hmm. like it, okay? Okay, but you're a real shoots. A what? Shoots. 
I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Means you're an old person that steals candy from babies. Okay, that was once. That was one time. I don't know how, I don't know how she found out about that, to be honest. Like, even, not even the kid really knew. The book, it knows all. It yeah, knows I when you, you pick your fleshy little icky nose and everything. I mean, I mean, that's weird. I don't like that. But, uh, okay, so, we don't know what happened behind closed doors. We don't know if this guy was being, what's his, what's his nose or whatever for a long time. I, it... If he laid a hand on the the little cat in there, uh, yeah, he deserved to die. It's just it's that straightforward. We kill that. You want us to go in the vault and kill whatever's in the vault? No, no. What? No, the thing we just killed. That yeah, the, no, that we was didn't what's kill supposed him. to happen. We got, our, we got our butts kicked. I mean, what? I saw his head fall off. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, here's the thing. I don't think this was the real guy. Okay, I don't think this was her husband. It's a fake guy. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. The point is, I'm pretty sure we got to go find the real one. Okay, well... If I was an evil doppelganger, where would I hide the not doppelganger? I don't know. I, I, we, I, we got a job to do. We don't really have to save this guy. We got to go get the, the, the package. I was just trying to say, maybe we, we pay courtesy and tell the, the cat lady what happened. Okay, but listen. I'll hear me What's out. That? I'll speak in your language. Side okay. job okay. equal more money. Oh come on! You know you you know that's not true. You know you just want to stay on the nice list. Side job put you on nice list. <sighs> Fine. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go. <sighs> Is everyone all right? You holding up okay? You guys look rough. No, no, nope. I could use a long bath. Long, warm bath. Maybe they'll put us up for the night then. Um, perhaps. All right, so back to Mrs. Claus. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go tell her the news. Okay. You come back into the kitchen and you find both Telfy and Mrs. Claus somewhat cowering behind various different objects in the room. Mrs. Claus, who? Who's there? It's Guess us. God. Hey, you were back. Yep. Oh, uh, oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. What happened out there? Is, is my husband okay? So, um... It wasn't your husband, kinda? Unless there's something you need to tell us about there being an evil skeleton man that was, you know, that he turns into at night or something? Oh, wait a minute. What? What? Did the skeleton say his name? Yeah, but I, I, when I heard it, I cringed so hard. I think I forgot it. What was, what was the name? I cringed so hard. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Helene saying this. <laughs> Dicks. Well, to be fair, I was kind of, you know, an icicle. So. Frozen. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, um, Klaus does have a cousin who a long oh. time ago was very upset with him after the advent of the first gift, miss. There was a bit of a battle, some a falling out in the family. Um, and, uh, well, Nasta well, became very bitter about everything. Aline, was that, I mean, not Aline, uh, Elena, uh, I'm Aline. Uh, head's all messed up. Yes, you are. Uh, Elena, yeah. is, was that is that was that who that was? I don't remember. Yes, his he said his name was Nasta Claus. And she goes, yes, that's it. Oh yes, Nasta, a nasty being, if you ask me. Yep, that was him. He farted icicles everywhere, and we had died. We had to kill him. Oh goodness gracious! Well, I'm, 
I'm glad you're all right, but you look awful. Are you okay? Mm. Define okay. I, I mean, I'm I feel fine. like I got a little freezer burn in one of my, you know, one of my wings, you know, but, uh, I, th- I think I'll be okay, maybe. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, I'm glad you're all right. Thank you again for the help. Now, where is my husband then? Yeah, about it's that. It's me. I, I assume, you know, I assume you know, that, like, you know, if they stole, uh, if he stole some stuff, it's probably the same spot. Well, can you point us to the direction, the direction of uh, maybe where the package might be? Maybe? Oh, yes. Um, there's a small temple outside, uh, that we utilize as the vault system. Um, we could attempt to check that. Yeah, I guess let's uh let's check that. Sure. That seems to be the only logical way, like place they could probably be here on this rock. I, you, know, you know, I don't know. If there's a package in there, great. If there's a Mister Klaus or whatever, then that's great. You know, if there's only one, well, we'll deal with it when we get there. Sure. Mrs. Claus will lead you outside with Telfi, the elfling, in tow. And it is a biometrically coded lock. We'll place, as she takes her mittens off, onto uh, the large door there. And it will... She doesn't lick it like a cat. She doesn't lick it like a cat, Dan. (laughs) (laughs) And inside, wrapped in, well... Rather nicely done wrapping paper is one Mr. Klaus. <laughs> Ribbon all in his mouth, making it very hard for him to talk. I can't hear oh, you. Honey! And uh, she will go rushing in uh, to go assist him. Unwrapping him. Oh, 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 hello there. Oh, thank you for finally finding me. Uh, who do I owe uh, my thanks to? He again like, starts untangling himself from the ribbon, tying him to a chair. No, uh, I don't know. We just found you. Oh, dear, dear. These lovely people had come by to pick up a package, and yet they set about defeating your nasty cousin and saving Giftmas. My my head hurts. Um, oh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, it was yeah. actually, you know, this one right here actually saved my life. We're actually, you know, this is our first time working the same job and everything, and then, you know, she saved my life. Ooh. Goodness gracious. Um, well, thank you so much for finding me, and how good of you to help us here. (laughs) Well, I suppose there's probably some way I could thank you. Um, Now, you said you were here for a package. Yeah, yeah, we were sent to find a package. Yes. Uh, Nasta, when he gets in these kinds of moods... uh, he will uh, wax at length about his nasty deeds and his nasty plans. He told me exactly where all the presents were. They've been buried <laughs> in the garden. He'll be back probably next year to exact his revenge, but for now we are safe. Good. Now come, come. Uh, Telfi, go grab her. Uh, Woodolf, and, and see if you can't find the presence down in the southern gardens. Wait, you say this is a common occurrence? Oh, I would say it happens yearly, yes. Why don't you just kill him? Oh, he's family. Helene, he's family. So you're yeah, telling me that that's... every every year he, he, you know, he wraps you up and, you know, stuffs a ribbon in your mouth and then pretends to be you and stresses your wife out. Oh, and no, then... no, no. His plans vary from year to year. This one was the first that he made the attack directly upon our home. Quite clever of him. Just... 
Just cut, just kill him. Just get rid of him. I'm no. saying, I'm telling you, it'll save you a whole mess of trouble. Oh, Helene, this is how you end up on the naughty list every year. How do you know, my, how do you know I'm on the naughty list? Do you just know that at the top of your head like that? Oh, Helene, I oh, know I everything know about you. You don't know me. So what are you going to do next year? Well, next year I will perhaps hire additional help. <laughs> Maybe, perhaps, if you are around, Pine, you would be able to assist. Oh, I can help. Would you like to? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. I like hearing that. Now, come here, Pine. You've been so okay. good this year. I have a gift for uh, you. Oh, for me? Yes. Yes. Okay. He'll reach into a little, a little pocket, and he pulls out something. And, well, for us, uh, he's going to pull out a card. Pine? He's going to pull out a card. Uh, and, um, well, he gives you the moon card, which for us in our deck is the ability to cast the wish spell. Now, hold this tight and keep it for when you need it. But when you're in trouble, just make a wish. Hey Pine, there's a there's some stuff where your nose should be. Are you asking me to use it so I can get a fleshy little thing on my face like you? Are you crazy? No, no, I'm just saying wipe wipe it. There's some the brown stuff there. Never mind. It's fine. What? I'm just kidding. I don't Nothing. know what you're talking about. You got vomit nope. on you. Yeah, you're not wrong. I do. <laughs> Well, now that this is all done, please come inside. Let's sit by the fire, warm our bones, and, well, I'll get that package for you. Excellent. Thank you, Klaus. Of course, of course. Now, come inside. And, well, with that, we're going to close out our, our show here. Everyone warming themselves by the fire. Nice cups of tea, additional cookies if necessary, and a long rest in tow. Eventually, our friends are given the present to take back. It is neatly wrapped in a striped red and white packaging, large red bow atop, and it does say Fragile on it, and do not open. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out today on a nice little Christmassy, vibey session. Uh, and for putting up with all the lag on my end, because uh, this recording is uh, obscene. It's bad. It's bad. Fortunately, all the sound <laughs> came through. So everyone that listens to this stuff on Spotify is not going to know the amount of horror I went through as a producer today. So thank you, everyone, for participating. Both of my cast members, thank you for making the time. We'll do some shout outs, and then we're going to call it the end of the day. Cat, welcome back. Yeah. Playing Pine Soul. Where can people find you on the internet? You can find me at twitch.tv slash imcat or on Twitter, which is imcatcat, but mostly on Twitch. I stream creative and variety, and I'm currently playing New World yes. with a mixture of Halo Infinite co-op story. I saw you playing Halo Infinite, and I didn't know what you were... It was the co-op story. Okay, cool. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Are you liking it? Do you, do you enjoy it? Well, okay. All right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I should. All right, moving on. Dan Tash. It's, it's, it's rough. Uh, great. It, gr graphics are good. It, it bugs. Bugs. Yeah. I mm. am not surprised. Yeah. Dan Otage. Nice. Thanks for coming back for another uh, throwback uh, look back into Helene's life. Where can we find yeah, you on absolutely. the internet? Yeah, it's, uh, it's always interesting thinking about, like, oh, what sort of adventures has can we connect to what is already happening right? um yeah uh also when is cat uh, when are you changing name to am baby <laughs> um <laughs> uh no my name is dan otage uh you can catch me at everywhere on dan otage like twitch and youtube uh, lots of videos going out guides for tarkov and uh also lots of dying in tarkov that's just kind of like honestly the roles you've seen today have been my like other game roles for the last three days 
it has been so incredibly rough i'm hoping the luck turns around soon so uh yeah we'll be doing that for the next few days uh tomorrow's like some uh new year's eve stuff might do some jackbox and some games and all kinds of good things but yeah i am everywhere at danotage yay excellent thank you guys very very much and thank you all at home for your love and support on this uh this is our last show of the year so be safe enjoy the holidays happy new year and see you in 2023 Bye. Goodbye.